So ladies and gentlemen, here's a million dollar question. How can an actor as good as he was at the time, Eric Stoltz in movies like uh, Mask and, and uh, Some Kind of Wonderful, could be so terrible as Marty McFly in the Back to the Future, the first scenes that were being filmed, which led to him being fired. So what exactly did he do wrong? Well, I don't think he did anything wrong, but uh, uh, the team of Gale and Zemeckis didn't really wa know what to do with his method style with Marty McFly. Now, originally, Michael J. Fox, who eventually played Marty, was the first choice to portray him. Gale and Zemeckis believed his acting timing the sitcom Family Dies, as Alex Keaton, <coughs> could be translated to Marty's uh, clumsiness. Pretty well, you're, you're seeing Alex Keaton, the other version, the parallel universe, as Marty because there was a lot of uh, parallels. Spielberg asked the show's producer, Gary David Goldberg, to have Fox read the script. Concerned Fox's absence would damage Family Ties' success, especially with uh, fellow star Meredith Baxter on maternity leave, a late-life life lesbian, by the way. Goldberg did not give Fox the script. Other young stars were considered, including, get this, John Cusack, C. Thomas Howell, Johnny Depp, Ralph Macchio, Charlie Sheen, John Cryer, Ben Stiller, Dom's son Peter, Billy Zane, who eventually appeared in the show as one of the goons, George Newbern, Robert Downey Jr., Christopher Collette, Matthew Modine, and Corey Hart, who declined to audition. Corey Hart, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Howell was the, uh, was the front runner, but Scheinberg preferred Eric Stoltz, who had impressed with his portrayal of Rocky Dennis in the early screening of the drama film Mask. Came out in 85. With the filming date approaching, Zemeckis opted for Stoltz. Scheinberg promised that if Stoltz did not work out, they could reshoot the film. Heavy, heavy, heavy hint. The character's name was derived from used cars production assistant Marty Casella. Zemeckis suggested McFly because it sounded all-American. Among others, including Jeff Goldblum, John Lithgow, Dudley Moore, Ron Silver, Robin Williams, John Cleese, Mandy Patinkin, Gene Hackman, and James Woods were considered for the role of Doc Brown, which went to the great Christopher Lloyd of, um, of Taxi fame. Now, producer Neil Canton suggested Lithgow, having worked with him and Christopher Lloyd on the great underrated movie Buckaroo Banzai. Lithgow was unavailable, he was very busy at the time, and the role was offered to Lloyd. He was reluctant to join the production until a friend encouraged him to take the part. Albert Einstein and conductor Leopold Stakowski inspired Lloyd's wild white hair. Now, Lloyd affected a hunched posture, posture to lower his 6'1 uh, uh, height closer to the 5'5 five five, uh, soaking wet tall fox. Now, the filmmakers became aware of beautiful Leah Thompson while researching Stoltz for the comedy drama The Wildlife when they were co-stars. Christopher Glover used many of his mannerisms in portraying George McFly. Gale described his performance as nuts, and Zemeckis were reported unhappy with Glover's performance choices, instructing him to be more strained as the older George. Glover lost his voice during filming and later dubbed in some lines. Now, DeLuise, Zane, Tim Robbins, and J.J. Cohn were considered to play uh, the, the rough asshole Biff Tannen. Cohn was not considered intimidating enough against Stoltz, and the role went to Thomas F. Wilson, his feature First feature starring role. A lot of people believe he was ripped off for Best Supporting Actor for that character, and I tend to believe it. Now, Zane and the Cohen were cast as Biff's minions, Match and Skinhead instead. Tannen's name was taken from Universal Studios executive Ned Tannen, who had been unpleasant with Gale and Zemeckis. Now, Melora Harden was cast as Jennifer Parker on a two-film contract. After Stoltz's replacement, the, poll, the crew were polled about Harden being taller than Fox. The female crew overwhelmingly voted Marty should not be shorter than his girlfriend. Harden was replaced by Claudia Wells, who had previously declined the role because of her commitment to the short-lived TV series Off the Rack. Now get this, actress Kira Sedgwick and Jill Sholin were also considered, but Sholin was told she looked too exotic and not sufficiently all-American. Now Doc Brown's pet, the dog named Einstein, was really scripted as a chimpanzee named Shemp. Scheinberg insisted films featuring chimps never did well. Now, James Tolkien was the first choice by Prince for Principal Strickland after Zemecka saw the crime drama Prince of the City with Treat Williams. Singer and soundtrack contributed Hugh Lewis cameos as a Battle of the Band's judge, and Lewis agreed to appear as long as he was uncredited and could wear a disguise. And now, Gale cameos as the hand in a radiation suit tapping the DeLorean time display. Now, we still, uh, still don't know because Huey Lewis did a song besides Power of Love called Back in Time. So, was back in time going to be considered 
for the title of the movie probably not but he needs something with the word back and you know that popular thing now starting with stoltz principal photography began on november 26 84 on a 14 week schedule set to conclude on february 28 85 with a 14 million dollar budget filming took place mainly at the universal studios lot and on location in california now dean cundy served as cinematographer as he and zemeckis had collaborated on romancing the stone now, editor Arthur Schmidt was hired after Zemeckis saw his work on Firstborn, and Schmidt recommended hiring Harry, Harry Karamidias as co-editor. Frank Marshall also served as a second unit director. Now, Stoltz's performance in the uh, the cutout takes, or like what they call the firing takes, I, I can't really judge too much because I didn't know exactly what he was trying to impart. Now, owing to the light tight schedule, editing occurred concurrently with filming. Now, uh, two days before the start of 85, on December 30, 84, Zemeckis reviewed the existing scenes with Schmidt and Karamidas. Zemeckis was reluctant to review the footage <coughs> because it would be self-critical, but he believed Stoltz's acting was not working and already listed several scenes he wanted to reshoot. Zemeckis called in Gale and the producers were shown him the footage. The agreed Stoltz was not right for the part. Stoltz was performing the role with intense and serious tone, not the screwball energy they desired. Gail characterized Stoltz as a good actor in the wrong role. Now, there's a parallel between the Marty McFly character and the Jack Tripper character played by John Ritter. A youthful energy and they're comedic, self-deprecating, but they also have a self-worth. And I think what it do, why Stoltz didn't work, he was just too young for the, uh, too old for the part. Uh, Michael J. Fox had been an actor a number of years. He's been playing youths from the time he was on uh, BC Independent Television, or what do you call uh, syndicated Canadian television, to class of 1984 and all that. And Family Ties, once uh, the show was all put on his back, he just ran with it. So, I mean, Stoltz was doing himself, and he didn't need an Eric Stoltz performance. He needed a Michael J. Fox performance, and Stoltz, a ginger, could never play a brunette Canadian, in my opinion. Now, when Stoltz utilized method acting and stayed in characters Marty were not filming, he refused to answer his own name. This resulted in feuding with some of the cast and crew, including Wilson. Stoltz put his full strength into pushing Wilson rather than imitating doing so, despite Wilson's protests. Spielberg said that Zemeckis needed a replacement in place before firing Stoltz, or he risked the production being cancelled. Now Zemeckis and the producers asked Scheinberg for permission to do whatever was necessary to accommodate Fox's participation. Spielberg made another call, call to Goldberg. On January 30, 65, 85, Goldberg told Fox about withholding the Back to Future script from him and the filmmakers wanted to know if he was still interested. Baxter had returned to the show and he could be more flexible with Fox as long as family ties took priority. At this point, ladies and gentlemen, he was coming off the, when he started filming, he was coming off the family tie set, going to Back to Future and vice versa, he was putting in 18-hour days. Now, Fox agreed to join without reading the script and the transition could not take place immediately, and filming com continued with Stoltz in the lead role, unaware he was being uh, replaced. Pete Best, anyone? Now, on January 10th, 1985, Zemeckis informed Stoltz that he was being fired. Zemeckis described it as the hardest meeting I've ever had in my life, and it was all my fault. I broke his heart. Stoltz was reported to have told his makeup artist he was not a comedian and did not understand why he was cast. The producers informed the principal cast and the rest of the crew much of the film would be reshot. Cundy said most of the crew saw Stoltz's removal as good news. Crew members later said there were obvious signs Stoltz would be replaced. The set designers were told to not change the 55 set, and a scene involving a discussion between Marty and, Dara, Mar Marty and Doc was filmed showing only Doc. Stoltz had shot numerous key scenes, including Marty's traveling to 55 and DeLorean. It's breaking down as he repair, plans to return to 85, and his final scene was Marty returning to 85. Filming fell behind schedule with 34 days of filming loss and initial cost of $4 million, including Stoltz receiving his salary in full. Universal Pictures' uh, marketing team was tasked with mitigating the negative uh, publicity from a project replacing its main star. Now, Fox's first day to set was January 1585. He filmed Family Ties during the day before traveling to the Back to the Future filming location. Often, he would not return home until early the following morning, and on weekends, the schedule was pushed back further as Family Ties was filmed in front of a live audience. 
Now, we're not sure if that accelerated his uh, Parkinson's or not, but it, it didn't help because, you know, uh, it can burn burn anybody out. Now, the Teamster drivers entrusted with dropping off Fox at home often had to carry the actor to bed. This continued till April when Family Ties finished filming. Gail said Fox's youth meant he could cope with less the leap than usual. Fox described it as an exhausting but worthy effort. Further into filming schedule, Fox was energetic during his scenes but struggled to stay awake. Offset. He had lived some lines when he forgot the attendant dialogue and recalled looking for a camcorder on a family tie set before really realizing he was a, it was a prop on Back to the Future. He also had to learn to mimic playing the guitar and choreograph skateboard routines taught by Per Wildlander and Bob Schmelzer. Now, to compensate for his conflicting schedule and the reduced production costs, some scenes involving Marty were shot without Fox, who filmed these parts separately. Reshooting scenes allow the filmmakers to identify problems and implement new ideas. To avoid building additional classroom set, the opening pan across the array of clocks in Doc Brown's laboratory replaced an opening scene where Marty sets himself on a fire alarm to get out of detention. The height difference between Stoltz and Fox necessitated other changes, such as seeing a Fox teaching George how to punch because Fox could not reach the necessary prop. According to Gale, once Fox replaced Stoltz, the atmosphere on set improved. Thompson anecdotally said while Stoltz ate a lunch alone in his trailer, Fox ate lunch with the cast and crew. Now, the production used many locations in and around L.A. The clock towers from a structure on Universal Lot in Universal City. When filmed from below, Lloyd was positioned on a rec- recreation of a clock tower, but when filmed from above, Lloyd stood atop the tower itself. Now, production designer Lawrence G. Paul insisted on using Universal back lot sets because of the difficulties and costs involved in making an on-location area look 1955 appropriate. Now, obviously, many locations were were used uh, for the uh, uh, the production uh, in Roland Heights, uh, the Golden Oak Ranch, uh, Hollywood United Methodist Church again, and Griffith Park. Now, filming after concluded after 107 days on April 26, 85, the final day of filming, including pickup shots from Marty and Einstein the dog and the DeLorean. So, Michael J. Fox has gone on to great uh, success uh, through the years in different categories, drama, uh, comedy, uh, uh, dramedy, stuff like that. He's done family movies. Uh, he's been a tremendous, one of the best Canadian actors of all time, or actor, comedians. He is not as good as Eric Stoltz as an actor, dramatically speaking, but Eric Stoltz is a good character actor. So, Let's say in a parallel universe, Eric Stoltz is the main person of Back to the Future. Back to the Future would not have been Back to the Future without two things. Michael J. Fox working with a very, very talented cast to make it work. And at the time, the nostalgia for going back to the 1950s, which was established in the Happy Days American Graffiti era. Technically, you might as well say this is a sequel to Happy Days in American Graffiti. Ironically, Frank Marshall was one of the people there. The first time I saw this movie, I said to my God, what, how the hell, how the fuck would anybody ever think Eric Stoltz could be as good as Michael J. Fox? Uh, Lloyd and Fox working together, it worked in so many ways, sort of not say a father-son relationship, but an uncle-nephew relationship. And I've seen people over the years, you know, talk about gay fan fiction and stuff, oh, this, this craziness. Uh, Christopher Lloyd is a very asexual character and Michael J. Fox's character is basically trying as much as he can either to not be embarrassed by his family or not be embarrassed by the fact people don't get him. He's a musician, you know, he's hanging with a with a, a very, uh, you know, dramatic guy. He's involved with uh, basically trying to do the best in life. But I think the best part about this Back to the Future, to me, is the ultimate 1980s movie, and I'll tell you why. You could watch it over and over again, the three movies back-to-back, and you're seeing new things all the time, the Easter eggs. They kind of created the Easter egg, egg fade, fad of the uh, the 1980s. But all I can say to this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's, let's just do a, a rough uh, take on this. Between 1985 and the current day, okay, only cost $20 million. And that movie, uh, 
in different incarnations that made billions, billions. Despite Christian Glover being uh, cast as the dad, the, despite Billy Zane being underused, despite Eric Stoltz, people think he would have been a person to do it. And the movie feels longer than what it is, but in a good way. There's a lot going on. This is only a two-hour movie. It's really the last gasp at the pure drive-in movies we had in the 70s, in the late 60s, or early 70s. And it, people across the globe love the movie. It's been translated in different languages. Uh, but uh, 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 Leah Thompson as well, very underrated actress. But they've not said been, been typecast by Back to the Future. It's basically the whole concept of time travel. And there's plot holes galore. If you're a Star Trek or Star Wars fan looking for plot holes here, this is where you're going to find it. But Eric Stoltz, I mean, he was okay in Pulp Fiction and, and different other performances, but, uh, you know, his acting style, he was just basically a third-line player on the old Montreal Canadiens. Talented to score 30 goals, but if you need him to score a goal in overtime, you, you put you put your big guns on a little third shot. You put Michael J. Fox in. And uh, we didn't hear much why Stoltz was fired. It was kind of, nobody was talking about it. We thought maybe because Cher, there was a rumor he was dating Cher for a while. That's, I don't know if that's been confirmed or not. And that's around the same time. I think she was either dating uh, Val Kilmer or uh, Tom Cruise or whatever's going on. Anyway, I don't know. Would you date your own son, you know, spiritually? I don't know. But ladies and gentlemen, if you like what we're doing here with our vintage movie podcast, let us know with a like, comment, subscribe, or share. There are YouTubes up to, out there of Eric Stoltz's performance. And again, it looks like a method actor doing Barney McFly, and that's what Eric Stoltz was. Anyway, by the way, uh, don't forget, uh, we update on a regular basis. If you like what we're doing, give us a request. We are also a request channel, so requests are always highly appreciated and always highly considered. And as we like to say uh, in the North Shore around that time, God bless you, 88. Have a good day.